Do you use GNOME 3 and have problems with applications opening up a second icon in your dock? I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the nerd on the street, and today I'm going to show you how to fix that. Alright everyone, so it's a fairly simple video today. Sometimes in GNOME 3, if you add an application to your favorites or the dock on the left side of the screen, clicking on that icon doesn't always just open the application, sometimes it actually puts a second icon in your dock, which obviously isn't usually what you want. It looks much cleaner to only have an icon in your dock once. You can fix this very easily for almost any application with a really simple method. I'm gonna cut to the desktop right now and show you. All right, everyone, and here we are on my desktop. Just so you can see things a bit better, I'm actually going to crop the video to the upper left corner of the screen, and I will just get rid of a few icons here to make it easier for you to see what I'm talking about. So down here, I've got an application in my favorites called k -Sysguard. I added this to my favorites, and if I click on this icon to open k -Sysguard, as you can see, it opens up a second icon down here at the bottom of my dock. If I open this up again, it just keeps opening more icons. GNOME 3 doesn't realize that these are all part of the same application, whereas with something like my file manager, for instance, let me go ahead and close all my other file managers. If I open up one of my file managers here, as you can see, there's no additional icon at the bottom. It knows that this application goes with this icon, and I can open up more instances of that by middle clicking, and it just keeps adding a dot to the same icon. So obviously, CaseDiscard is a KDE application, but how do we make that perform the same way in GNOME 3 so that we only have one icon in our dock? Well, this is actually very easy to do. I'm going to make this window a little bit smaller here, and we're going to open up a new terminal window. What we're going to do is run a command that is xprop wm underscore class. Xprop was pre-installed with Ubuntu. It's also available for all other distributions that have Xorg. But if you're on something like Arch, you may have to install that manually. But when you run this command, you get a plus for your cursor and just click on the window of whatever application is causing trouble. So in this case, we'll click on System Monitor and you can see we get the wm underscore class string for ksysguard, which in this case is literally just ksysguard. Even though the title of this window says System Monitor, Xorg sees this window as ksysguard. So this is how GNOME actually keeps track of what application belongs to which icon. Now for our fix, what we're going to do, we can close out of cases guard right now and we'll keep this handy, our terminal up here. I'm going to open a file manager and you'll need to find the .desktop file for whatever program is causing trouble. Because that .desktop file, if you're having this problem, it's actually missing this WM class string or the string is set incorrectly. So the default location for these, at least in Ubuntu and probably in other distributions as well, is at user share applications applications right down here and if we go in here we've got lots of dot desktop files for lots of different programs we find cases guard we can come down here and this looks like an application but it's actually it's like a shortcut on windows this is a dot desktop file if we right click and click properties you can see type of file is x desktop so what we're going to do is right click this and open it in a text editor. It doesn't matter what text editor, if you're on GNOME, KDE, Mate, whatever else. You can use KWrite or Gedit or Pluma. Uh, just open up this .desktop file for your application. And depending on the application, you might see different things. This is a KDE application. We've got lots of different languages here. If you open up some other application, such as a LibreOffice application, as you can see, uh, it's going to look a bit different. There's extra stuff in the LibreOffice one. It really doesn't matter what else is in here. We're not going to touch most of it. Just go to the bottom of this file. And like I said, if you're having this issue, the most common thing it's going to be is you actually just don't have this WM class string in here at all. If the string is incorrect, then you can correct it. But what we're going to do is add it just at the bottom. So the string you need to add, it's going to be startup WM class equals and then this string that we found earlier. So just copy this and paste it right in here. Okay, so at this point we could just save the file. Now obviously if we try and save this, uh, I'm getting prompted for a root password right now. I'm actually going to click cancel. I know you couldn't see it there, but you can see this document could not be saved. It was not possible to write to, that's because we're in our user share applications directory, which we really, even if we had permissions to write to that, if you have root access, which you probably do on your own computer, you don't want to edit files in user share applications. Your package manager manages these files. So next time we update CasesGuard, it would overwrite this .desktop file. 
what we want to do is specify our own user override of that file. And for that, it's super easy. All you have to do is save as and go to your home directory. You're going to enter a hidden folder. That hidden folder is dot local. So enter that. You're going to dot local, share, and applications. And this is where you can put your own custom dot desktop files. You can see I've added some other ones already. So at this point, we can click save. And right now, you see the, the icon here just pulsed. Just to be safe, I like to remove the icon and add it to my favorites again. So we'll go ahead and close out of all of our, I've actually got another instance of cases guard on the other monitor. I'm going to go into the no menu, find cases guard again, and I'm going to right click that, add to favorites, might have been cut off a little, but you can see it's in our dock again now. I'll drag it back up to where it was. And at this point, if we click it, you can see it just opens up, puts a dot next to the icon, just like we wanted. So we can close out of everything else now. And if we middle click to open up another cases guard window, it's just going to keep adding dots there. No more duplicate icons. So if you ever want to modify this behavior, once again, you save that custom file in your home folder to dot local, share applications, and that's where you can put custom.desktop icons. This is also where you can add icons if you want to add things that aren't even installed through your package manager. You don't have to just copy .desktop files from that other location I showed you. You can actually make your own custom.desktop files to run custom commands. For instance, I've got a command here that I added for starting my screensaver, and I made that an icon in my doc. That's a little out of the scope of this video, but for now, that's your quick and easy fix for fixing duplicate application icons. This works with every program I've tested it with so far. In addition to KSysGuard and other KDE apps, I've had this issue with uh, DaVinci Resolve. I've had the issue with some file managers before, and this is also really handy when you're dealing with app images. So yeah, hopefully that was helpful to you. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have any questions. And if you do find my videos helpful, feel free to join the Nerd Club at nerdclub.nots.co to support my content. That's all for now. I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd in the Street, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.